Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Welcome to Ask Rob and Rob, that reassuring part of your property week where you know exactly what's going to happen. You're going to hear two questions and two answers. And before that, you're going to hear us read out a phone number. Yep, the number is 013 808 0003. Three, five. You can call in, leave us a voicemail, or you can leave us a message via the website, and you'll be able to do that through propertyhub.net forward slash ask. Either way, super simple. If you mess it up, don't worry, just record it again, and you'll end up sounding as good as these two people. Hi, Rob and Rob. Adam here from London. I've been listening to the podcast since it was recommended by my friend James. Love what you guys are doing. Um, I have a question that I don't believe has been answered so far. I've been saving up to start investing in buy-to-let properties in the north and have a plan that I'm happy with. In the meantime, I own the property that I currently live in in London and have a repayment mortgage on it. I currently have 45% equity in this and I don't want to put any more in as it won't provide the same return or growth that I could achieve from buy to let. Are there products available to have an interest only mortgage on my personal property? And if so, do you think this would be the right approach? Appreciate your advice on this question. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your question, Adam. Now, interest only mortgages on residential properties were very common up until the last major crash in 08. Before that, lots of people, myself included, had an interest-only residential mortgage. But now that is not the case. And now there seems to be limited appetite from lenders to offer you an interest-only mortgage. For those who don't know what interest-only is, it's where you just pay the interest of your mortgage and you don't pay down the capital. That's called tax on repayment when you do. That said, I know there have been products recently that have offered interest only if the loan to value isn't too high. So for example, Nationwide had a product that if you had 40% equity, which you do, you get a 60% loan to value mortgage and you can get interest only up to, I think it was 500k. So, you know, it was a lot. So you could get interest only on a huge sum. Now, when I came across that product. It was a few months ago and it might not still be available now. But the fact is it existed and lenders are possibly starting to open themselves up to the idea of doing this. I think it's a good thing for the right type of person, not for everybody. And I think that's how they should assess it rather than saying this type of product is wrong for everyone. But a good mortgage broker will be able to help you here and guide you through it. However, if options are limited now, I do believe in the future we will see more products as the mortgage market loosens up a bit that will allow you to get a mortgage that's interest only on your residential property. Time will tell. Okay, great answer there. Let's have a listen to our second question this week. Good morning, Rob and Rob. Uh, First of all, thank you very much for all the good work you do. I've been following you for ages and I feel so much better educated just by listening to you. I have a question with respect to a property I own in Birmingham. It's with respect to the fixed term contract currently in place. The first year term ends in June and the tenant has expressed interest in extending this for one more year. I have found this tenant using an agent and they handled the contract for me. I'm not particularly happy with this agent and would like to handle this by myself going forward. How should I handle this contractually and also in terms of the deposit scheme, which was also handled by the agent? Could you please give me a bit of feedback on that? Many thanks for your response. Keep up the good work. Bye. Well, I wish I had an easy answer for you, but unfortunately, I think it's probably going to be more difficult to do that than you would like it to be. Reason being, when a letting agent finds a tenant for you, there's normally something in the language of the contract that you have with them that says, basically, they get paid for as long as that tenant is in occupation. So even if you don't like the job that they did in the first year and you want to keep the tenant but lose the agent, they normally will insist on getting paid anyway. And that can often cause really difficult situations like your one where you're really happy with your tenant but you're not happy with the agent yet even though they kind of shouldn't be they end up being linked together so you can't lose one without losing the other so what can you do about this well first of all check your agreement with the agent it's generally the case that the big national chains of agents have very strict wording in their contracts the smaller ones normally do but it's possible that they're either more lax or more generous If that clause is in there, you can still try to talk to them and see if you can come to some kind of arrangement. Maybe you can pay them off with a smaller amount of money or you can at least negotiate a lower fee to make their service a bit more palatable. It's always worth having the conversation. And if it comes to it, you could, of course, unilaterally break the contract and say to them, come after me if you can be bothered. I wouldn't personally do that and I wouldn't recommend you did it, but it's something that you could technically do. Your second point around the deposit, 
that's kind of the easy bit, really. If you were keeping the deposit in the same scheme, it might depend on the scheme, but I think normally there's a way that you can just transfer the deposit from one person to another without it physically having to move anywhere. If you're moving it between schemes, then you'll have to work with your former agent to get that money back out and then put it back in again. But that's secondary, really. That's the easy bit. It comes down to, can you lose this agent in the first place? So try those steps that I outlined. See if it gets you anywhere. But if you do end up being stuck with the agent, then take comfort. At least you're happy with a tenant. And it's much better to have a tenant you're happy with and an agent you're not than the other way around. So that's us done. Two more questions, two more answers we've delivered on our promise. We'll be back next week with Ask Rob and Rob, so make sure you keep your questions coming in. And of course, we'll be back with the Property Podcast on Thursday. Until then, take care, have fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.